Good morning, brothers and sisters. Today I am going to resume uh, where we left off in Revelation, which was chapter 5. I have been fasting in prayer, and I have been asking the Lord how He wanted me to conduct this. Um, let me just start by uh, praying over this message today. All glory be to Father God, creator of heaven and earth. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. I ask the Holy Spirit today on all of our behalves um, to, to guide me in my words, to grant me wisdom, but to grant me clarity in the word so that we all are able to follow along. As I mentioned before, and I do have to mention this, the reason that the Lord is having me do this is because he is anguished that many of his children, even those who have been in Christ for a while now, we are not taking to our Bibles. And he has clearly, excuse me, he has clearly indicated that we need to be on the same page in the book of Revelation. So I am being obedient and I'm just going to read through it, and perhaps we can share um, ideas or knowledge uh, in regards to the scripture. Uh, he does want me to go over the fifth seal because it's important for us uh, to know where we're at. Although the fifth seal, you will see, gives a setting of heaven. Um, and let me just, um, let me, before I do that, I'm going to start off by telling you also input um, literally downloaded in my spirit the Lord has given me a revelation and reminded me of when I first started in my walk with him when he first called upon me I was just a babe when I received this message and this message changed my world I mean it rocked my world just as when he called upon me um, when it was clear that he was communicating with me. I was about just over a month into the actual prophecies where he had given me a um, a, a three-part series uh, prophecy that he wanted me to speak, and all three of those came to fruition. About a month after, just over a month after, I received my first audible word from God. And I've shared it before, but I'm just going to break it down um, quickly because he doesn't want me to make this complicated. He wants me to just sort of let the words flow from my mouth when we go through um, the book of Revelation. Again, so we're going to uh, resume on uh, chapter, uh, it would be chapter 6, the fifth seal is where we're going to resume. Nevertheless, when I was fasting here in the last couple of days, I was asking him if he wanted me to, to resume the study, which I knew he did, but I, I felt that there was something that he wanted me to, um, like he was trying to tap into uh, with me to remind me of something. And, and surely that did come about very clearly. Um, and, and again, maybe you can share some ideas on it because um, God knows I am not a scholar. Um, I don't profess to be. I don't have all of the answers. Um, I think it's very important that we work in unity uh, to try to see not only where we're at, but so that we are uh, prepared or maybe we answer questions to those um, who are having a difficult time just getting into the rhythm, the groove of getting into the Bible. Because a lot of times, many, and I, I know a lot of you will um, will reflect upon this as, as true, one thing you know, once in a while we'll take to the Bible and we get frustrated and, and um, we just want to, you know, put it away um, because we become too, uh, we become too agitated, frustrated, um, because it sometimes can be uh, overwhelming. Uh, the verbiage is overwhelming, you know, it's quite a mystery indeed. But anyhow, going back to uh, fasting with him in the last couple of days, he reminded me of that first audible word that I received it is a day that I will never, I could never forget that. It was so loud. His voice, God's voice was like thunder. And what I heard audibly 
by then I had, was sitting up in bed because he had woken me up to a black screen. And I was confused and I asked, I said, Lord, why, why did you wake me up to a black screen? I don't understand. Again, being a new babe in, 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 my, in my actual calling. I mean, I've always been a child of God since I was little. I always had a love for, for the Lord. You know, it was, it was just overwhelming. But in, in my actual um, walk where I started to really see, oh my God, this is really happening. And in that audible word were exactly the words given to me were, there will be three days of rain, three days of thunder, and three days of darkness. So he reminded me of that before moving forward. And it's very um, timely. He works with precision. The reason he reminded me, you'll understand in just a moment. Well, needless to say, I can't help but reflect on that day because of the st at the point in time that we are in the study. But I'll be also advised that the great day of the Lord is referenced more than 80 times in the Bible. It's referenced more than 80 times in the Bible. And what's really interesting are the parallels, the absolute Uh, parallels to the sun will not give its light the moon will turn to blood red things of that nature so I'm going to move on the fifth seal the cry of the martyrs when he opened the fifth seal I saw under the altar this is a setting in heaven the souls of those who had been slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held and they cried with a loud voice saying how long, O Lord, holy and true, until you judge and avenge your blood on those who dwell on the earth? Then a white robe was given to each of them, and it was said to them that they should rest a little while longer until both the number of their fellow servants, okay, so there's clearly, the Lord is still waiting on fellow servants to come, and their brethren who would be killed as they were completed. The next part is the sixth seal, which, again, he reminded me regarding the three days of darkness audible message given to me on October 5th, 2015. Excuse me. <clears throat> the sixth seal is outlined cosmic disturbances. I looked when he opened the sixth seal and behold, there was a great earthquake and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became like blood. And the stars of heaven fell to the earth as a fig tree drops its late figs when it is shaken by a mighty wind. Then the sky receded as a scroll when it is rolled up, and every mountain and island was moved out of its place, and the king of the earth excuse me, the kings of the earth, the great men, the rich men, the commanders, the mighty men, every slave and every free man hid themselves in the caves and in the rocks of the mountains and said to the mountains and rocks, fall on us and hide us from the face of him who sits in the throne, on the throne from the wrath of the lamb for the great day of his wrath has come and who is able to stand? This clearly identifies that this is the beginning of wrath. This is the beginning of the day of the Lord. Let's go back and reference this because he wants us to go through this so that we understand it together. When it says, I looked when he opened the sixth seal, that is Jesus, our Savior, Yeshua HaMashiach. He was the one found worthy to open up the seal, the Lamb of God. <clears throat> and there was a great earthquake and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair and the moon became like blood. So we know right there it's becoming dark. So what is, we have to ask ourselves, what is the defining clue to the day of wrath the beginning as it states in the verse that I just read in 17? It says clearly that we will experience a mega 
earthquake, moving every mountain and island was moved out of its place. The sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became like blood. And then what does it say? And the stars of heaven fell to earth. The stars most likely indicate meteorites. When it is shaken by a mighty wind, the sky receded as a scroll when it's rolled up. This is literally, we're going to witness the sky doing exactly that. It's going to scroll and roll up. And then it says, it continues, every mountain and island was moved out of its place. And the kings of the earth, the great men, the rich men, the commanders, the mighty men, every slave and every free man. So in other words, some are enslaved, some are free. But they all hid themselves in the caves and in the rocks of the mountains. Now we already know, if you've been following prophecy, that indeed they have tunnels, they have bunkers. They've been, they've been getting ready for this. And then in verse 17, for the great day of his wrath has come and who is able to stand. Again, this clearly indicates that because we're in the sixth seal, there's cosmic disturbances. Again, we're doing this in, so that you can get a visual, an, um, not only a visual, but also be in the know on what to expect would be those defining moments. The defining moments when it would cause you to act and not freeze into place and just go, you know, like normally people will just freeze when they get scared, they'll freeze. But these are defining moments that the Lord wants us to know about. So that we are prepared, whether we need to prepare to go inside for safety, whether we need to put on the full armor of God in Ephesians chapter six, verse 10 through 20. He keeps telling me that one too. He keeps downloading that in my spirit that we need to keep in mind what that those verses say as well, because it says put on the full armor of God. Okay, because when darkness comes, we know that the enemy is also going to come and we're going to need to put on that full armor to protect ourselves. And if you've been following along to this channel, the Lord gave us specific instructions on how to defend ourselves. The word is your weapon. Please start um, taking to your Bibles, but also start taking into consideration, perhaps writing down post notes around your home. I've been doing that. I've been writing um, protective uh, scriptures uh, or scriptures of protection, I should say. And I've been posting them throughout our house for when that day we're ready. Okay, so I'm going to leave it at, well, no, I better not say I because the Lord wants me to proceed. Uh, okay, please stick with me. Please follow along. I was hoping that this wouldn't be too long and I don't want to lose you. So it's very important because the Lord is instructing me on how far I should go in the study. Okay, so the next one is the sealed of Israel. After these things, I saw four angels standing at the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth. In other words, earth, the wind has halted. This is after, of course, the earthquake. Then I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels, to whom it was granted to harm the earth and the sea, saying, Do not harm the earth, the sea, or the trees until we have sealed the servants of our, or excuse me, until we have sealed the servants of our God on their foreheads. So again, the Lord is uh, revealing to us in Scripture that destruction has already come, great wrath, the day of the Lord is here, and that the four angels are instructed to halt the wind until his people with the seal of God is on their foreheads. In other words, he's marking his people to make sure 
And he'll be able to tell that of who's repentant, re repentive, I should say, and who is not. And I heard the number of those who were sealed. The number, take a guess, 144,000 of all the tribes of the children of Israel were sealed. And then it names them, 12,000 in each. I'm just going to go off the first one. Of the tribe of Judah, 12,000. Of the tribe of Reuben, Reuben 12,000. And so on. Now, I'm going to go through, because some people, even in the body of Christ, did have some questions about this. Um, and I say this with all humbleness, because this was one of my primary, uh, primary assignments at the beginning of my walk. The Lord told me specifically. You're going to write down in your journals and you're going to, I'm going to give you a lot of information. Make sure you get it right and don't change it. And that's what I've done. I've tried to be obedient as possible in my walk. Next part, I'm going to try to make this under 20 minutes. A multitude from the great tribulation. So let's reflect a little bit. Mega earthquake, the wrath of God, darkness has come over. The angels halt the air. The Lord, the Lord our God seals his servants that he knows have been waiting for him. Next part. This is the part that will give you great encouragement, guys. This is a gr awesome encouragement. Okay? For those of you who perhaps have fallen asleep at the wheel, so to speak, or, you know, have just gotten frustrated or just have gone under a spiritual attack that you just can't deal with it anymore. Whatever the case may be, please be encouraged because this is this will encourage you. I promise you it will. A multitude from the great tribulation is what it's called. Listen to that again. A multitude from the great tribulation. Now, please hear what the spirit, the Holy Spirit is saying to the church. I'm going to read this a couple of times, I'm sure. After these things, I looked and behold, a great multitude, which no one could number. This is not the same as the 144,000. Okay, you'll soon understand why. A great multitude, which no one could number of all nations, all tribes, peoples and tongues standing before the throne and before the lamb clothed in white excuse me in white robes with palm branches in their hands and crying out with a loud voice saying salvation belongs to our god who sits on the throne and to the lamb all the angels stood around the throne and the elders and the four living creatures and fell on their faces before the throne and worshiped God, saying, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom, thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders answered, listen to this, saying to me, Who are these arrayed in white robes and where did they come from? I've gone over this a couple of times. One specific time was the instruction of when the day of wrath comes. Okay, now let's continue. This is so very important, very, very encouraging because the Lord literally spells it out for us right here in chapter 7, verses 9 through 17 in Revelation. And uh, let me go here. Where did they come from? And I said to him, Sir, you know who come out of the great tribulation and washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Guess what, guys? That's us. That's the rapture of the church. Those who were ready, those who had fully repented, those who had fully forgiven and made their white garments clean. Therefore, they are before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne with, will dwell among them. They shall neither hunger any more nor thirst any more. The sun shall not strike them nor any heat. For the lamb who is in the midst of the throne will shepherd them and lead them to living fountain of waters. Right there, it says that our Savior, Yeshua HaMashiach, will be in our presence and he will shepherd us. 
Amen, amen, and amen. And God will wipe every tear from their eyes. That's what I wanted to leave you with. I wanted to leave you with absolute hope that we are very, very, very near. And yes, although we should never wish upon the day of the Lord, for indeed, as the Bible tells us, it is a day of darkness. Let us be prepared. Let us be mindful, but let us be knowledgeable by taking to these verses. Again, most importantly, what we read today was Revelation chapter 6 and all of 7. Take those, take those to heart today because that absolutely is your hope. And let's get ready today and always. I will, and I'm going just over 20 minutes here, guys. I just want to let you know, I do have to do um, some uh, homework on another subject that the Lord is having me uh, bring forth, but I want to make sure that it's done correctly because he has had me sit on that vision for over a year now. And I know it's absolutely vital and I don't want to, I, I don't want to be rushed through it because I feel I have to come on. So I'm going to wait until he gives me, he's already given me the confirmation that he does want me to share it. Uh, for me, honestly, uh, I would have rather have kept it to myself. Uh, just, I just thought that it would be better for me to just sort of keep that to myself. I mean, maybe that's selfish, but there has to be a reason is my point that he wants me to share it out loud. Otherwise I would have just sat on it, but I love you guys. Please stay encouraged. And absolutely. We are almost going home. I love you so much. God bless.